want to talk here and expand a little bit further on what I've said in some of the other videos is around the economics of beekeeping. And New Zealand had this beekeeping model, and still has actually, which is maximum hive numbers and minimum management. So you have lots and lots of hives, and but you don't manage them that well. Um, but you still get a profit because on the hive numbers. Unfortunately, Varroa doesn't fit that model particularly well. Because, because Varroa costs are a per unit highs, unit cost for hives, and you're not making more money out of them in any way, then it's just a drag on this kind of model. What it fits is the model of minimum hive numbers and maximum management. Although you can take it to the extreme, but trying to increase the value from each hive, because your cost of rower is a cost for each hive, is a much better approach than trying to fit it into your maximum hive numbers and minimum management. And the New Zealand approach was, a, was minimum management costs a lot of hives in New Zealand, because we could never co convince beekeepers to sample varroa levels, like, like Sarah taught you in her videos. They would put treatments in, assume they had worked, and then come back in the autumn to, after the autumn treatment and see if they're alive. And if they didn't, they lost hives that way. And um, as, as much as we tried to, we couldn't get them to check to make sure the treatment had worked because that's an extra cost and on maximum hive numbers of energy management, it doesn't work. So again, what you can do in preparation is to look at your own business. And one thing that I kind of like is if you go to an apiary and look at the variation in honey production from your hives. So if you look at the colonies that are collecting the most honey, that in theory is what all your colonies could do. And there's some management issue is the reason why the rest of them aren't. Whether it's a queen problem whether it's other disease problems, whether it's swarming, there's all sorts of reasons. But what, it, what you can tell from your colonies that if you want to put a bit more management in there, you've got an, some easy wins to get up to your um, honey production the same as everything else. If you want to do better than that, you've got to find another technique to use, like double queening. And we know for New Zealand's conditions, you can get a 50 to 60% honey increase by putting two queens in your hives. So looking at your model for producing honey, if that's what you're doing, is a really useful thing to do before Varroa gets here. The difference between your best colonies and the rest of them is management. There's some management thing that they're getting or not getting is the reason they don't all look like that. If you want to make more profit on this end, then doing the same thing won't get it there. You have to find some new technique that you can use to try and increase it further. And the warning, of course, which I've given 15 times, if you're gonna do something new, don't do it to more hives than you're willing to lose. <laughs>